about? I got one, one deer on here. I just thought I'd do a random live. I ain't never done a live. I was in here in the shop uh, about to powder coat some jig heads. See, we got five on there now. Y'all comment who you are. I see uh, Doggy Jones. What's going on, man? I'm just up here in my shop, chilling out, uh, waiting on uh, some of this weather to clear up, man. Uh, got some jigs here. I'm, I just got through pouring and about to do some powder coating. Just thought I'd get on here and try out a live. Most of the locations that I fish uh, don't have enough service to do any type of live, so maybe uh, maybe one day I'll be on one of those lakes where I can do a live with you. I'll just wait around here a minute and let a, let a few people get on here. Uh, That's what we got going on. I believe I can turn this camera around, but let me see here. Yeah, so I got I got a bunch of eighth ounce jigs here that that I just got through pouring, and uh, I use this uh, Protec powder coat. But I'm just gonna, like I said, just more or less trying out this live thing and uh, seeing if I could uh, learn how to operate it. So uh, I'm doing good, Billy. I missed a lot of these comments, so. See if I can figure out how to get them back on there. Anyway, I don't see it. Hey, uh, Texas Crappie Assassins. I'm doing pretty good, man. Just sitting here chilling in my shop, just trying to get ready for another crappie trip. I uh, had one of my buddies, James, that uh, does a lot of night fishing, sent me a message about 30 minutes ago and asked me if I wanted to go back on a night fishing trip tonight, so. I think I'm gonna go do that. Uh, and these crappie just hadn't been biting this, this last two or three days since this front came through. But yeah, I just uh, thought I'd just get on here and try this live out. Like I said, uh, most of the places I fish don't have enough service I can go live. And uh, about to do some powder coating on some jigs. So uh, let me get let me get my, uh, my heat gun here and let a few of y'all get on here and you might want to watch how I do my powder coating. Got the old express sitting here, just waiting. He's just waiting on getting hooked up. But anyway, I may, uh, if I can get this phone set up to where uh, I can video what I'm doing here. I got a tripod here. Just take me a minute to get on here. But I'm just going to show you what I do on the uh, powder coating and I never have any issues with powder coming off I mean I know they say bake it in the oven at certain temperatures for so long but I never have issues of uh the powder coating come off you know coming off uh, I guess it would if you beat it on rocks but I'm not really beating it on rocks so uh yeah let me turn this camera around here and see if I can't get this set up on the jig uh stuff here I'm doing I won't be able to see your comments while I'm doing this so uh just bear with me. That's pretty cool, Texas. Crappie assassins. I guess we think a lot. Uh, yeah, I've got plenty of jigs in my boxes up here, but hey, on this downtime, and uh, they say this crawl, uh, fall crappie bite is supposed to be as good as spring, and they'll go back hitting those jigs good. We're gonna find out, but I'm gonna be prepared when that time gets here. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this camera around a minute. I won't be able to see your where you sell your products. I don't really sell products. So I mean I do, but you know it's more of a I guess a, a benefit to some guys uh, that I do sell. But I really I really don't advertise to sell. Uh, I will. You can contact me at adrianwfarley at gmail.com. That's a d r i a n w f a r l e y at gmail.com. And uh, and I'll make I'll make some jigs up, you know, from time to time and sell them. But I'm not really into into selling. I like fishing more, so <laughs> I'd rather stay on the water. Uh, so y'all want to see some powder coating? We got ten people in here. That'd be enough to start this, I guess. Eleven. So uh, 
Like I said, I won't be able to read your comments when I start this, so uh, just bear with me a minute. All right, so like I said, I've got I've got eight ounce jig heads. I've got a Protec red powder coat. I've got a, uh, a DeWalt heat gun here. It's got different settings. You can go different temperatures. Now, let me see about this thing. This is low battery power, so I don't know. Maybe I can get something in here a minute. Just bear with me a second. set up any better than what it was, but maybe you can see this. So what I got here, I, I use a pair of needle nose pliers. I just grab my jig head like this. I usually just shake up my powder and get it really loose. And just gently set it back down here. And I'll crank this heat gun up to probably about 300, 400 degrees. Let it get hot. I had to find the rhythm on this to how long I hold this in front of the heat gun. But I'll usually count to about 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, that looked like it was hot enough. It kind of turned the, kind of turned it darker red, but as it dries out, it'll be a real bright red. And you see, uh, if you get the temperature right, you won't fog your eye up either. Then I'll just hang it on the wire here, grab me another one. I'm going to set this up right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And dip it back in here. Let it hit it a little bit. And there we go again. Just keep doing that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me get back on here. All right, I can see some comments now. Let's see, we got 18 people on. I had 10 when I started doing that. So yeah, that's how I powder coat my, my jigs, and I've never had any problem with it. I've been powder coating and making, well, I've been making my own jigs for over 20 years, and I've been powder coating, I don't know, at least somewhere close to 10 years. But uh, yeah, here's a, try to get this to focus a little bit. They look pretty good, but these are eighth ounce. 
I know a lot of people use these uh, light jigs, you know, it's just not, I would if it was my fishing technique, but it's not my technique. You know, I don't have live scope and I've, I've never just went out and, you know, daubed around with 32nd and 64th ounce jigs. Uh, although I do use, you know, the 12 and 11, 12, 14 foot crappie poles, I only, uh, Oh yeah, that powder coat is the way to go. I highly recommend that. And uh, I can't remember how much that powder coat is. I think it's got a price on that, but that's an older bottle for about $8 or something. But yeah, the powder coat is the, is the ticket. I used to paint them when I first started. I painted them with a red fingernail polish. Uh, years ago, probably, I'd say around 25 years ago at least, uh, I had a, me and a friend of mine, we had both had uh, trailers down the river where we fished for crappie. Actually, it's down in the last video. Uh, mostly Alabama, that's where I'm from, Billy. But anyway, uh, like the videos and love the Bible verses. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it, man. But anyway, on the last video where me and my brothers were down fishing the Demopolis area, I had a trailer on the river there, and a friend of mine did, and we always were men of fishermen. And there was these guys from Mississippi, I don't know who they were, but they uh, come over and they would use jig and cork. I had never done that, and this has been probably 30 or so years ago. But man, they would wear crappie out in the springtime on that jig and cork. And uh, my buddy got showed how to do that, and. Me and him went to jig fishing and we tried every color jig there was and just, you know, using fingernail polish, whatever we had to paint with. I don't even know if they had powder coat back then, I doubt it. But anyway, uh, we tried every color there was and, you know, we fished every, every time we fished, we fished together. So we would do these little trials where, you know, he would fish with one color, I'd fish with another. And we'd, for the most part, fish all day like that. Just find out what the colors would do, on, you know, which I know, light and water clarity and all that stuff affects it but overall and uh and a lot of the videos that i post lately is is on a clearer lake and i still use that red over there and it still outperforms most other colors for me anyway so uh so i always stick with red uh it's, it's done me good in dirty water or clear so it doesn't matter uh, a friend of mine told me to try orange this last year and i hit hit them with the orange a little bit and they did pretty good Oh yeah, hey, you can't beat it, especially chartreuse and black with red. Uh, that's my number one go-to in the spring. If they're on the bank and you know you got some stained water, uh, chartreuse, uh, red, black. Matter of fact, I got a, I got some hand ties here that that I love using in the springtime. Get them out of my boat here. Y'all bear with me, man. This is just a spur of the moment thing here. But you can see what I what I tie, what I fish with when I'm using my hand ties. This is a red eighth ounce black body chartreuse tail. Um, you know, I like chartreuse and chartreuse and red, chartreuse black and red, chartreuse and black. All those, uh, in in my opinion, and probably anybody's opinion, chartreuse and black is a go-to color. Let me get back out of this boat. But yeah, that's what uh, that's what I like best, uh, chartreuse. Yeah, man, there's some videos on my on my YouTube page here that uh, that you can go to, and uh, I guess it's I can't remember what the name of the video was. It's, it's going to be a year or two ago, but uh, I made some videos fishing with these jigs, and uh, they wore them out, man. But now that I got to this first live I've ever done, I'm trying to read through these bifocals. If you keep seeing me look up here. But, uh, yeah, just basically just trying to figure this live stuff out. I'm here at home and had some service, so I thought I'd uh, try it out. And while I was powder coating some jigs, just throw that in there. I got another video coming out. Um, it won't be a 
Actually, me and my brother Joe went down and fished our local lake a couple of days ago, and, and you saw the picture that I may have shared on, on the uh, community side of YouTube, holding up a couple of big crappie. We actually uh, kept five crappie that day, and I uh, wouldn't have kept them, but a couple of them died, so we just kept them, and he wanted supper. So. But anyway, uh, uh, you can get it at Bass Pro Shop. It would be the easiest way to find it. Oh yeah, that's right. Fish ain't biting. Weather's gotten the hell down. I was kind of reluctant to give my buddy a, a yes on tonight, but uh, for the ones that hadn't, wasn't here when I was talking about that a minute ago, uh, James, uh, one of my buddies that fish nighttime a lot, he fishes everywhere. He fishes. He fishes everywhere. I mean, he's retired and he fished Grenada. He said he's going to get into some crappie tournaments soon, but he's the one I go fish with. And the storm affect y'all up there. Uh, it really wasn't no bad weather other than just a bad uh, pressure system or something, I guess. And I went the other day and it was a uh, crappie stacked up everywhere on the structure, but uh, man, I couldn't get on the bite. I mean, I'm I'm putting minnows in their mouth and let it sit there, and they wouldn't they wouldn't even take it, you know. Just every now and then, I gotta get these things in the water. I got a place with uh, 26 feet deep water. I poured these things. I used to make them in five gallon buckets. But I started doing them in a plastic tote just to give them a bigger footing. And I also put a, I'll put a Gatorade bottle tied to the top of it up there to let, uh, to let it, you know, make sure it stays upright. But these things are 12 feet tall. And I've got some more right here. My brother's got a sawmill. And uh, he and I cut up a wide oak log. So these things ought to last a while. <clears throat> but I got to get these things in the water, man. Uh, I know I catch fish on them this coming spring, probably this fall. But they're 12 feet tall, so that'll put my top of them up to uh, 14 feet below the surface. Which on this lake, these crappie run deep anyway. Uh, and stay deep. I mean, they hardly ever come up to 10 feet, although they will. And I've seen them at 7 or 8, but most time, 10 and deeper is where they're at. Especially in the early spring and fall, I guess. Oh yeah, I'm fixing to put some homes in there for them. And uh, maybe I can make a video on it. Care some of y'all fishing. But uh, yeah, man, I'm just really just getting on here, just trying out this live. I've never done it. And, and like I said, I don't have service on the water that I normally fish. Uh, if I do tonight, because I am going night fishing with James, but if I've got service tonight, I might just jump on there and just do a random live. You know, give you give you a shot of what we're doing out here on the water during the night. Yeah, thank you, thank you, to, uh, Texas Crappie Assassins. Hey, I try to. Do you do any fishing in salt water? I used to uh, back when I was physically able, I guess, to perform this hard labor I've always done in this Marvin Granite business. But uh, I hadn't done any salt water fishing in a long time. Oh, that's pretty good. 20 keepers off of Lake Tuscaloosa. I've never fished Lake Tuscaloosa for crappie. Um, I fished at one bass tournament. Just uh, It was a benefit tournament and had no idea what to expect on that lake. Uh, me and my son-in-law went and fished it just randomly, basically just to support the, the uh, benefit that we were supporting. And uh, we ended up keeping, uh, I think it was a five fish limit on that day, and it was an all-day tournament, probably 200 boats in it. And um, we ended up with four fish, and we I bet we caught 50 fish under 12 inches trying to find that fifth one. But anyway, I had caught a three-pound bass that morning. Hey, Miss uh, Alabama Farm Life. But anyway, I had caught a three-pound bass earlier that morning, and we got to weigh in that afternoon about three or four o'clock, and Everybody was out there, man, you got big fish, you got big fish. And I'm like, what? Three pounds, you know? And they said, yeah, three pounds. I said, well, we'll see. And anyway, I ended up getting big fish. I think it paid about $500. So that was a, that was a big deal. But I have never crappie fished Lake Tuscaloosa. So anybody got any questions or anything, man? Like I said, I wasn't going to stay on here long. I'm just going to jump on and 
try to get used to this live stuff while I did have some service and was up here pulling some jigs. I got a video coming. Three pound fish is wild for a big fish. Uh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, I've, I've caught bass over 10 pounds, plenty of them. So three pound didn't, uh, never fished there. heard about it though. Hey, I got a, I got a friend that uh, I used to fish with when I grew up, you know, being teenage and young 20s. Uh, he's a big crappie fisherman, but he fishes down there a lot, and he catches a lot of nice crappie, but I just never have done it. I don't guess I ever had needed to. I'm still trying to learn that Warrior River after 30 years, because it whoops my butt sometimes. Most people won't even fish it, even bass fishing. Anybody will tell you that's tough down there. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to. I'm going to try to go to Logan Martin this weekend. Well, I'm going to try to go tonight, I guess. I done told him I would. And, uh, yeah, if I got service, I might break out alive tonight, just randomly. Uh, some of y'all might want to see some of that Kentucky Lake and Lake Barkley, my home lakes. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, me and two of my, well, I got two sons. Me and my two sons are uh, looking to uh, come up to Kentucky or Tennessee in the next few weeks, and we're going to go do a, a trout fishing trip where we're just camping, uh, something I've always wanted to do, and... You know, getting to be on up in the years now. Uh, there's a lot of bucket list things that that I'm gonna do. Uh, I've done I've done a, done a lot of them. I went on a three day trip in a canoe last year in below 20 degrees on a deer hunting trip, and that's something I've always wanted to do. I did that last year, and I've always wanted to do a, a trout fishing trip. You know, and go camping up in the mountains. So me and my two sons are about to do that. Y'all got any more questions? I want to talk about anything? <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm just just pouring some jigs, and but I got a, I made another video. Uh, I don't have but five fish catching in that one with my brother. I don't know where that's at. G S M P. But anyway, between between that short trip and catching those few nice ones, and uh, y'all been wanting to see what kind of rig I got set up on my boat, uh, I guess I could if y'all want to see it. Y'all give me some thumbs up. I'll uh, go over the boat right now. But I got some video that I want to share in, in the in the next video. It's explaining explaining all that stuff. Oh yeah, there ain't no there ain't no crappie up there. At, at least there ain't no slabs. <laughs> now we catch a few slabs every now and then. Man, that place used to be on fire for some big crappie. Everybody says the crappie sizes went down there. Uh, I hadn't fished it in a few years. Uh, my brother Brian that passed away back in May, he, he loved going up there and he went a lot. And uh, back then we used to catch a lot of big crappie there, but the last trip, last few trips we went on, you'll catch a few slabs. You know, I say slab, pound and a half up. Uh, but most of them seem like they're around 11 inches, so, you know, 12. But, um, Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, that's what the GSMNP stood for. I'm sorry. I didn't know all that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up there in the Smoky Mountains, and uh, I'm going to take a tent. But uh, my youngest son, Drayton Farley, the one that's, uh, my, I share some of his music sometime on, on the Facebook sites and stuff I'm on. Uh, he's doing really well in his music, but uh, he told me the other day, he said, well, if you want to go up there, he said, I can get us free motels. And uh, he said, well, dang, he said, you talking about doing a camping trip? I said, no, nah, we'll stay in a motel too. We can always go fishing, get up out of a good warm bed and go. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Good day from Ohio. Fall bite is up on us. Yes, it is. Uh, somebody mentioned in one of my videos or a comment in there this morning I answered, asked me, if, did I think or have I heard anything about the crappie moving back up into the deeper creek shit? On the lake that I fish, uh, my more local lake, uh, I've been catching crappie. Some of these videos you've been seeing has, has been back in, in all the way, you know, say a half mile long creek. Some of them has been all the way toward the back of these creeks, but this is a deep creek. So they are moving back off the river some and getting back up into the creek some. I had another guy tell me too that 
There's a lake in West Kentucky called Maple Sink, called 17 inch. Six checker. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah. There's a lake here like that, the rock ledges and stuff. It's up uh, another buddy of mine. We fished it this past spring up in North Alabama. But anyway, the crappie, uh, some of them are moving into the creeks now. But I had another guy tell me that uh, he'd been catching most of them out around where the shad were on the main river channel, uh, six to 10 foot deep. So, uh, well, that's a Neely for numbers, Logan Lay for size. Yeah, I fished uh, Jordan one night last winter and we ended up catching some really big crappie, but there weren't very many of them. I want to learn those lakes. I want to get on Mitchell and Jordan. Uh, favorite plastic for crappie. Uh, I mean, I use mostly a two inch curly tail grub. I use it whether I'm jigging cork or casting jigs. Uh, as far as favorite colors, I'll give y'all a sneak peek. How about that? <clears throat> I'll show you, my, show you my jig selections, which is, this is my main box. <clears throat> I've been thinking about doing a video on this stuff too. Well, crap, I'll keep covering my phone over here. This is what I use most. I'm, all, I'm just going to show you the box, and you tell me what I use most. Which that one there don't go there, but what color would you say was the, the one I use the most? And I can tell you this: the reason this tray right here is uh, about empty is because. Empty tray, and it's the biggest tray, and this color is more crappie on than any other color. It's uh, I use a Kalen brand just because the tails stay on better, but it's uh, black on one side, blue on the other with a chartreuse tail. Now, this is more of a clear chartreuse with glitter in it, but if you really get into stained water where it's really dark, I like going with a solid chartreuse tail because it's more visible. But that is my number one catching plastic grub. And then after that, uh, these are, uh, I think that's, uh, I don't know if that's Tennessee shad or Arkansas shad. Let me see what this one is. Tennessee shad right here. That's my number, number well, that's the number one too if, I, if I'm fishing in clear water. Man, that monkey milk, I know everybody loves it. And I don't even know if I've got one in here. Uh, I've got Bobby Garland's in here and those colors, but uh, if I were, I don't catch a lot. I think up there might be monkey milk. Yeah, that's monkey milk there. But this one right here is what I catch more on, on Bobby Garland. And I think it's called fire ice or something. Yeah, black and blue with a chartreuse on that is my favorite. A lot of people like white. I used to fish a white a lot, but uh, this this uh, this right here, y'all learning my secrets, man, but that's my go-to grub right there. I probably caught more crappie off of them than have anything in my life, even minnows. I did get into some really muddy water and I'm out of these. I need to find some more and they got a kind of a bigger profile. They're black and kind of a bright pink. So the water was muddy one day when I went over there casting jigs and uh, I couldn't get them to hit anything, but I put that on there and I went through a pack of them and they wore it out. So I gotta get me some more of them. So I appreciate all y'all staying on there today, man. Like I said, I wasn't even doing this for any other reason than just, than just learn to deal with this live stuff. I don't know how to get these comments to pull back up on here yet. They'll come on, stay on a minute, and then fade off before I get to read them. So I'll read them and answer you after after this is over with, I guess. But anyway, uh, appreciate y'all sticking around. I don't even know what time it is, but I'm fixing to have to go down here and take me a shower and pack me a lunch and uh, time to go work, baby. Hit that Logan Martin tonight. Got to go put that work in. Might even make y'all a video if I can catch some fish. And like I said, if I can get to some 
get to some service up there, I will go live. We might just sit around and talk instead of catching the crappie. I don't know. I know they ain't been biting here in the daytime. Yeah, it just depends on watercolor. Live video is always interesting. What do you do for a living, if I may ask? Well, uh, that's going to come out in the, in the video that I was trying to get finished editing today. Uh, I'll explain to y'all and hear a little bit about me. Uh, I thought it kind of weird that I've never really did a did a uh, introduction to even who I am. <clears throat> but uh, my name's Adrian Farley. I'm from Central Alabama. I was born into a coal mining family. My dad worked in the strip mines, coal mining all his life. Raised in a small coal mining community. I uh, got a job working in Louisiana. I'm from Alabama, but I got a job in Louisiana when I was 19 in the marble and granite business on high-rise buildings. And I traveled for about 10 or 12 years across the United States doing high-rise buildings, the marble and granite installation in them. Got tired of traveling, raising a family, moved back home, started up a couple of fabrication businesses here with some friends. Uh, that didn't work out after five or six years. I started my own business fabricating granite and marble, mainly for residential areas like a kitchen countertops, which I'll do it anywhere. So that's what I did for a living. I did that for 35 years. Uh, the last two years that, uh, that I was in business, uh, my back had gotten so bad that my doctors kept telling me to quit or I wouldn't be able to walk. So I couldn't quit, so I kept going until I couldn't walk. I uh, put myself in bed twice in two years. The last event put me completely out of work. Uh, I was in bed five and a half months, uh, literally in bed without getting out of bed, and they couldn't figure out what's wrong with my back. So I never knew if I'd walk again or didn't know if I ever would. But uh, the Lord had different plans for me. So, uh, you know, I still got some severe back problems, and uh, some days it, it, you know, don't allow me to even hardly get away from the house any because I have to go lay down. But uh, God's blessed me to be able to get out here and do fishing and and sharing this adventure with y'all. So uh, that's where we're at. And believe me, man, I had rather be working 24 hours a day than, than, than being where I'm at right now. I appreciate that, green eyes. So I'm going to get off here, guys, uh, gals, whoever it is watching here, and uh, try, to, try to go catch some fish tonight. So uh, if I do, we'll make a video. And if I got service, we'll go live. So I appreciate y'all sticking around here. It's 33 minutes and 33 seconds. So uh, that's good enough for me, I guess. Uh, maybe I'll get back on here and do some more. Man, I wish I had service on my local lakes around here, but these uh, mountains are so high, it don't allow my phone to have enough service to even do the lives. So that's the reason I hadn't done them yet. But uh, yeah, thank y'all. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Green Eyes and Billy. Thank y'all. Thank you, David. And uh, we'll see you soon. I feel you, brother. I'm disabled, too. I work until I couldn't. Oh, yeah, man. We were, we were brought up in the days where you worked for a living, you know. My daddy worked us boys like we were slaves, and uh, he worked all the hours he could, too. So, uh, yeah, I know about working. And I uh, still would rather be working, you know. But I'm, I'm where I'm at, and I think that, uh, well, I know it is. I know it's all in God's plans. It's in his hands what, what we do. And uh, we just got to kind of listen to what, what kind of guidance he gives us, you know, and go with it. And, uh, you know, I'm just a nobody. I'm a working man. Come out of a coal mining town, you know. And uh, surely no, I'm not no kind of a preacher or nothing, but I know what Jesus Christ laid on my heart to do, and and uh, that's to help spread his, his the good news of his gospel, you know. And that's what we need to do, all of us do. It ain't gonna be long for for uh, him to be back here. Okay, appreciate it, Slab Buster, and uh, I'll let y'all know what goes on. Oh yeah, no doubt. I hate I hate inside. You know, I I didn't even have a high school education. I quit in the twelfth grade to keep my summer job. 
Um, I was down there working in the summer and I could have went back to school, you know, after school started back. And I had to think long and hard. Do I want to go to work or do I want to go to school? Uh, yeah, I could be if I could find some crappy Billy. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I, I decided that, uh, I said, man, I ain't never going to be sitting in no office. What do I need that GED for? And uh, so far, nobody's ever asked me for a GED, which I went on to become a tradesman and learn how to do a, do a craft very well. And God blessed me with the hands that, that did the most excellent work that you can find. That's, that's all to him. But uh, I had a, had a good reputation in the stone business. I sure will, Frank. So, uh, you know, that was a lifetime of uh, adventure just in that business alone. But here we are now in the crappie fishing adventure. And uh, going on 60 years old, I never thought I'd be a YouTuber. Well, ain't that something? And I didn't know nothing about a computer. I've never run a computer in my life. And here I am making videos with a cell phone, posting and sharing and talking to all y'all. That just blows my mind. <laughs> Golly. Yep, blows my mind. I ain't never done that for shell crackers. Man, these, these uh, comments are going away so fast, I can't read them fast enough. So I'm gonna have to talk to y'all whenever I get off here, but I'm gonna have to get off, man. Uh, I gotta go get me something to eat. I gotta go take me a shower. And uh, my buddy's gonna be by here at 4.30. I don't know even what time it is right now. It's probably going on two o'clock or something. So I got a couple hours to get ready and we're going on off on a night adventure again. So. Uh, y'all take care, man, and uh, thank y'all. That's all I can say is thank you. And God bless each one of you, and I love every one of you. So uh, we'll see you next time.